you were already curious or already skeptical of the whole Keynesian world in a way. Yeah. Um, what skepticism was that? And and I guess my, my question is motivated in the sense that before you understand Bitcoin or before Bitcoin ever existed, you, you kind of exist within the structure. You, you just have to get on uh, with with the environment you're in, right? But yeah. Bitcoin being the key to something else, and then you fall down a rabbit hole, and then you realize the uh, difference and the um, flaws of the fiat system. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Yeah, sorry. So, um, didn't want to interrupt you, but there were no. two. So, there were two situations that I really remember that, that I will never forget. The, the first one was that we had uh, statistics 101. And we basically, what we learned was about median and uh, average. So very, very, very basic statistics. So it was just like, and then they, they told uh, the statistics prof, he told us like, look, there will, you will see so many news reports in which they misrepresent the, the, the overall sample size and, and because they only focus on, on, on the average. And then he brought this example of, what, what would you do if you have nine people that earn 100K and one person that earns 10 million and then all of a sudden the, the, the average is, 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 is 1 million basically, right? something like that. <laughs> um, um, and, but the median obviously is way lower. So would that be a fair representation? That's what, that was the question on how we were kind of introduced to, to these basic statistics. And obviously that made a lot of sense and there's no question about that, that yeah, there are skewed averages, et cetera. And then it was literally the, the next day where we went into a macro, um, macro lesson and then we talked about the CPI. And so it's like, so wait a minute. So now we had this, we had this one lesson in which we learn about basic statistics. And the next thing we learn is that you put all baskets all everywhere for every person in the same thing. And you come up with one average and you say, so this is, this is kind of the status of inflation. So that doesn't make any sense. Uh, it, it's, it, that was, that was really one of the things. And I actually remember uh, asking that question on like, there are so many factors that you cannot, it's impossible to put that into one number, right? It's only the technological advancements, like how would you factor that in? But then also the, the, the individual, like only age-wise, if I only look at my past 20 years, I have a completely different basket. Like I, I, I would fully agree in Switzerland or when I was 20, I think inflation was basically, basically inexistent for my mm -hmm. basket at my twenties, because all I needed the money for was kind of uh, a bit of, a bit of food, a, a bit of drinks, lo lots of drinks, let's put it that way. <laughs> but, and all these things, they didn't really increase because we had, uh, we had globalization and we had technological advancements. Now ask me 20 years later, my friends and, and, and my family and, and we, all of us, we're looking into, yeah, by maybe, maybe where would we like to settle down? So now it's a completely different question, right? Now we're talking about, okay, what's, a, what's about the real estate prices and all these things. And there are so, so many questions are around that. And, and, um, and yeah, so, so that, that wasn't answered in my studies. And then the, the, the other situation, and now I, re, um, I forgot the, this very famous macro model. Uh, what, what was it called? TSLR or something for, for, um, for, for letters. It doesn't really matter, but we, it was like an import export model. And what, like the, what they taught us there was, so they try to factor economy of country A, into economy of country B, and then they wanted to say what the, what, what the implication is if, if one factor changes. And that doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm sorry to say, but this is like economics is, you have, you have humans in there. Humans take different decisions. It's like you have emotions there. You have, it's, that's just not so simple. So I, mm. and, and that's when that's that was when I questioned the fact that they tried to put business administration and economics into a form of science that is basically 
natural science. That is like they try mm. to use the same methods that they do in physics and mathematics and try to do something like that in economics. And that just doesn't make any sense. So, th so th those were the two moments when I was like, no, this is, this is not, this is not correct. <laughs> and then, okay. And then, no, I remember another one from, uh, from finance lectures when they talked about the efficient market theory. <laughs> and they, they they taught it in a way that yeah that's a given that makes like that's that's the reality it's the, the markets are always efficient i was like this is so stupid it doesn't make like the, the, all the facts speak a different language and and yeah that's when i started to question also what they taught us about keynesianism and that you can just print your way out of misery basically and all these things so so that but but yeah not i mean I think as usual with pretty much all the students, it, it takes a while until it clicks. You need real mm. life experience. It's not just theory doesn't really do it. At least for me, maybe I'm just not smart enough, but I, I needed to experience it. <laughs> I was just laughing at market efficiency that there, there is a very particular uh, lesson that comes into the back of my head when I was at uni, for the short time I was at uni. Mm. And uh, I remember two of my friends had a internship at two made like one major investment bank and one major let's call it like a credit institute it was also mm. dealing in retail and stuff and they both sat there's like that's absolute bullshit like if we go into our jobs and bear in mind internships is like you push paper around and you're maybe lucky to be in like two or three good meetings but even then they went like this is nonsense and i sort of sat there because i freelanced early i was like so if the market's efficient, I could raise my prices basically month on month end because, you know, if the market always performs, like I also have to adapt, right? Yeah. I raised the question. I got kicked out of the classroom <laughs> for <laughs> asking that question. I was like, well, but like, that's what you told us. And, but again, this is, I think, part of the scam because I think if you go out to the street and ask everyone, like, are you happy the way things are right now and how we're being managed by the government? Although, like, we elect them and they should work for us, but that's a different topic. Most will go no, but they can never put a point to why they're dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. And very few of them actually could say, you know, it's an issue with, like, central banking and the way the fiat money works. Everyone sort of suspects something's in the bush, but... You don't know what it is. It, it Maybe it's like, I don't know, politics. Uh, then you start fighting about like migrants or not migrants and these things. Um, or then it's like a bank fails again. Um, we're getting used to this in Switzerland. So like, oh yeah, <laughs> we'll save them again. So, you know, all of these things sort of combine. And um, I think this is also sometimes why it takes people so long to understand Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. I fully agree with you. And that's, uh, that's one of the things that I started to realize more and more when I wrote about the the link between bitcoin and politics and i mean it's it's not one side it's not a one sided issue you have like for instance that we in um, at the start of the 90s we had four massive banks as there's one left so they consolidated into one i don't think i, I ever i ever i ever heard the question of any big a newspaper also on on more of the on of the right or let's put it let's put it that way of the economy friendly side nobody questions that it's like no. it's always yeah okay it's well management mistakes and stuff like that which is obviously also true like it's not it's not only it's not only the system but nobody questions why does mm -hmm. it consolidate into bigger and bigger and bigger players and they will i mean now we have one left and there will yep. clearly be uh, troubles with, with that institute over the next 10 to 15 years again. And it and will you know what again I find, be... Yeah, sorry. And you know what I find more shocking with my, my new uh, best friends, the regulators? If you actually watch the progression with um, how the banks failed and during the failures, how much jobs were created at the regulators to prevent the failure... And now you go like, you have this gigabank between UBS yeah. and Credit Suisse or whatever you want to call it now. And like, you have the highest amount of employees at the regulator and they've done jack shit to actually protect uh, investors or protect customers. So you also have this progression where you go like one end just gets massive and the other end gets well. And no one looks at it and goes like, maybe the people in charge of regulating the stuff did a bad job. So let's cut that down. And yeah. no, let's not save the bank. But yeah. Mind blowing. Sorry to interrupt you. 
No, no, but it's ex it's exactly true. And I mean, it's honestly, it's also one of the one of the effects of, of fiat, right? It's like there's so much money spent on unnecessary things that in the end, it only protects the existing system, but it doesn't re it doesn't really in the end anyway as well, right? But it's like it, it, so so what so because we were regulated as well, my own, our startup. So we we went through the same thing in uh, in Switzerland and in Germany. And I mean, we were a small, small company, right? It's, we almost needed two to three FTE just to deal with these regula regulatory questions. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And, and it doesn't, doesn't help. Like th that's, that's where I, I can fully understand where your frustration comes from. It's like, okay, so you put all these hurdles in our, in our way. And then all of a sudden you have this multi-billion institution just whoop going going poof out of <laughs> into the nirvana and obviously they made a big mistake and everything like what they said yeah it's too big to fail and yeah, we have new regulators and now that doesn't that doesn't happen anymore and then you have janet yellen that says like we will never see a banking crisis again i mean at one point probably we should question the system <laughs>